Welcome back again, my friend. This time, I'm bringing you a very detailed offering. The Obroid Myrmidon was painted previously in a private lesson session with Muscle Warrior Caleb. Thank you, Caleb. And we left the shield separate so I could make this video. Ordinarily, the shield has some skulls and spikes on it, but I fouled it all flat so it'd have more uh, open territory to work in. The first thing that I want you to do, watch my video, Intro to Freehand. I'm assuming that you've already seen that going forward. You can watch things in any order that you please, but just know there is an intro and then there is an advanced version. We're getting into this more advanced territory. The second thing I want you to do, cultivate some ideas. Get out your sketchbook or go buy a sketchbook and start committing some of your imagination to reality. You'll find things may be a little more complex than you can handle or possibly there's some blank that needs to be filled in that you didn't imagine with your brain but you could see with your hands. Either way, prep those muscles. And with your muscles prepped, know that this can contain mistakes. I'm doing a fleshy, wrinkled, ugly face. We'll call it a troll face from now on. That's just kind of what it became. I don't know what I was going to make when I started creating this. It doesn't have to be anything just ugly. But it can contain a lot of mistakes. It's got, he's got, you know, heavy age lines, warts, wrinkles, weird eye makeup, possibly. But as long as you're controlling these mistakes, containing these little irregularities, and creating our, our gradients and placing things in a proper kind of contrasting form, you'll be doing just all right. Enough chatting. Seeing is believing. Let's get into it. To start off, I wet blended thornwood green and sulfuric yellow together, placing the thornwood green on the lower facing and applying the yellow in the brighter area as defined by the zenithal base coat. This took a few coats to get a passable result, four layers of wet blending later, and I was off to a good start. Wet blending is never a finishing technique, but it does help me quickly establish a nice saturated gradient. And next, just like building a model up, I started by working large to small, getting the major shapes laid in. Somewhat roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just kind of establishing some territory. The nose, eyebrows, and frowning face were my main shapes that the finer details will be brought off of. Smaller details, such as the teeth, forehead wrinkles, bags under the eyes, and crow's feet, were all sketched in thornwood green. Uh, something neutral that I can still blend over, I don't want to use an absolute black because it's going to be hard to cover up and adjust. With that laid in, I also have some larger areas of varying tones to take care of. The nose being tinted red, the whites of the eyes, some thornwood green and white to base coat the teeth, a greenish tone under the eyes in the form of jade and yellow, and I was all set. I can also begin laying in the shadows on the brow area. A general impression of a heavily wrinkled forehead deep in the cheekbones. I also laid some jade down on the fat lip. Then, moving at a stream of consciousness, I started highlighting the teeth. Remember that these are a simple mix of thornwood green and white, adding larger amounts of white to brighten them up. Let's raise the bright areas back up as well. A small highlight to add to the effect of the protruding chin, saturating the brow and forehead. And now that heavily aged kind of waffle iron imprint was starting to show on the forehead. Very nice. I'm jumping back and forth a lot. As one area is drying, I'm repeating the steps on the other active areas. It's very touch and go, somewhat chaotic, but with a wet palette at my side and a semi-clear plan, I could forge ahead and just balance things back and forth. Also, a small amount of white was added to the main sulfuric yellow, and highlights were applied to the upward facing areas of his face. Again, making sure that I'm tucking the highlights right up next to the shadows so I get a very defined line of where that highlight is running and I'll have to repeat this more than one time to get a nice you know, saturated version of that color showing. Now the design has been rendered up a bit. I can switch to a smaller brush and tighten up the details, saturating the tones, applying finer highlights, uh, the crow's feet needed some attention. I wanted them to be highlighted, but also appear recessed under the heavy brow. So controlling the volume is a necessity. The nose could also get some more attention too. It's quite the honker. 
some more uh, deep wrinkles segmenting it into a gourd-like resemblance and a stippled approach to the highlights really add to that porous texture. I focused on this area for a while. I was enjoying the textures coming out of his nose and crow's feet, and the way it was kind of stretched. Uh, but, it, but as the picture was coming together, my mind seemed to lean on these more satisfying areas. Nothing wrong with just leaning into it. On the lip, my approach was pretty simple. A lifetime without chapstick and the harsh elements have left this area dry and cracked. A series of small lines are applied using uh, mixtures of jade and white, being sure to bring the brightness up as the lines approach the center of the lip, and also on the, the more upward facing side. Um, just be sure to kind of break that line up so it appears to have this split and textured look to it. And then, you guessed it, yet another round of glazing the midtones and highlights in. Measuring the balance between highlight and shadow, a mix of red and thornwood green was applied to the areas around the eyes and cheekbones as well. Just add a bit of vitality to this visage. But I'm just kind of using these, these larger blends and playing with the transparency. Just bringing up the saturation, kind of creating areas of ragged texture, making them semi-smooth again with a thin glaze, then pulling the small textures out of that. I took a break following those steps. I wanted to give the paint some extended time to dry and look what I was doing with a fresh set of eyes. I could see some weak areas and went about fixing them up. Again, balancing what I was doing in the previous steps, asking myself what needed to be sharpened and what needed to be more saturated. I wanted the colors to be showing in their truest form, so a few extra layers of paint is good medicine. I also added a bit more to the mid-tone area. Using small amounts of paint, I brought some texture into play so the skin was more organic in appearance, opposed to the smoother take on blending. Playing with the uh, textures and enveloping the transparent layers, what fun! Also some pink was brought into the eyes, uh, graduating to white at the center, giving a slightly irritated and monstrous look. And it was really coming together. The lines were deep, the colors were vibrant, my highlights are in control. So why not paint the eyes? What's the worst that could happen? Well, let's just watch. It's fine. It's fine. But it wasn't after fine. I wanted something I was personally pleased with. I sat with those eyes staring back at me, feeling okay with them, knowing they would be changed later. More shading and separating was in order. Small amounts of black were added to the thornwood green to define the shadows and outline the features, such as teeth, lip, eyes, and the horribly deep lines across the face. Once I was happy with that, there was a bit of a fun part to get to. If you remember the original concept sketch, the flaming eyeliner depicted on just that sketch. Some black was combined with some jade, and it very carefully drew wavy lines descending from the eyes making sure to draw the center and then widening the sides towards the base of this little flaming tendril. Also, these couldn't be laid on plain and flat. A small amount of white was added to my base tone, and I brought some of the eyelid textures back through. Wherever the flame was crossing over a bag or a wrinkle in the eye, well, I drew a little bit of a highlight in there. And yes, even more highlights were added to the skin before setting the project down for the night. I was happy with where it sat and knew it wasn't getting any better until I had rest of my eyes. Day 2. I brought the stippling up on the nose a bit. Just two or three dots to cap off my progression, like literally just two or three. Space and distance is very important. And then a little bit of thornwood green and black to shade in the deeper areas. I also lined the face out again outlining the teeth, the lower eyebrow, and bringing the crow's feet up. Again. Can't seem to leave those alone. I'm fine with it. There's nothing against jumping steps in the process as you refine and see new options. There's also something missing from my original sketch. Another thing. The warts. All this talk about monstrous features and there wasn't a wart to be found. So, they were painted up in the same progression as the rest of the skin, but kept in a very tight, compact, circular shape. Not bad. Now, finally, staring out at me, the eyes must be fixed. I decided on a more round and small retina and pupil combination, 
opposed to the uh, kind of demonic, if not kind of cartoony, snake-like slit-shaped pupil that I had before. This would allow me to add a bit of color, and if they're beady enough, will still present as a monster. If I had these kind of wide, large retina and pupil, I get more of a hopeful kind of look. And we're not after that. I decided again to pull some of that beautiful jade tone in for the eye color, adding small amounts of white as I brought the progression to a head at the base of the retina, and then pulling in a tiny white dot up in the darkest area to get that reflected light look. And there it sits, fastened upon the flexing forearm of the Ogroid Myrmidon, spinning in all of his glory, fighting enemies in a 360 fashion thanks to the solar-powered jewelry stand. Gotta love those. Hope you enjoy this video. I hope it serves to inspire and motivate, never intimidate. Which is why I also made a second video on the exact same topic. I recorded all of the footage as luck would have it. The entire process took me around an hour and a half, and I'll be posting a second companion video to this where the footage is sped up, but it'll just be that. The entire painting process from start to finish, so you can see every hairy little detail opposed to the kind of overview of the technique and application in these normal length tutorials. So, you get both. A big thank you to every cultist, every wizard, every sworn sword, every member of the Hidden Hand, and every muscle warrior. I've got a lot of members in this unchained kingdom, and your support means a lot, so I just wanted to pass along my largest and most unchained thank you. So, enough chat. Seeing is believing. Let's get into it. Fuck. 